Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold and a lamb of your own flock and a sinner of your own redeeming in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As much as I was tempted to preach on lamentations and the groaning of priests, I have decided not to. And there was great applause. <laughs> That's right. Instead, I'm going to preach on our gospel from Luke today. In our passage, we find Jesus surrounded by friends and uh, those kind of close followers, the apostles, and they ask him to increase our faith. And I, I want you to know, I'm going to take a little bit of an unorthodox look at this passage today. You might want to have it in front of you as we go along, but I want to suggest that uh, Jesus' answer is not quite what you think. I think we spend our time wanting more faith. And this question that comes from his followers seems completely natural to me as a bishop and as somebody who has served in community. But I want to suggest that Jesus' answer really is something more like all you need is a little faith. You don't need a lot of faith. You need just a little. Whatever faith you have, you should not be ashamed of. But instead, believe this. Jesus is offering a picture of himself and his ministry. You say you have little faith, but I am like a worker on a farm. I have been plowing the land and sowing the seed. Like the sower, I have sown seeds of faith everywhere, and I've given you words of faith and examples of faith. While I've been you, I've shown you how to live a life of sowing faith yourself. Well, consider this. I'm like a shepherd. I've been tending the sheep in the field. I have protected you from those who are against you. I've gone after the lost who are now among you. I have shown you how faith works and what it means to be a shepherd like me. What it means to live a life of faith where you're the good shepherd. Soon it will be time to eat, to eat supper. And it will be our last supper. And I will take the mammon of the world, those earthly things, bread and wine, and I will set the table with them. A table that is set not for me, but for you. A table where I will break that bread and share wine so that you may have food for the little faith that you have. I have given you, in fact, at this table, this supper meal, faith, food, if you will, for your life's journey. And when I am done with all of that work, which I am doing for the God who is in heaven, when I am done, I will not be celebrated. But instead, I will die upon a cross with no gratitude for my ultimate sacrifice. But that's okay because the world will not know what it is doing. I will give you grace and mercy that flow from that cross. My last act as sower, shepherd, and servant is that I will give you the ultimate gift which is just a little faith in me. 
And it will come with freedom from sin and freedom from fear of death, freedom from the anxiety in the world, and freedom to believe. You see, I don't think that it is about how much faith you need or really increasing your faith. It's just about having a little faith in Jesus and what Jesus has done, what Jesus has shown us. And that's what it's about. It's not particularly complicated at all. But you and I have a little bit of faith hang up, (laughs) if you will. And we spend most of our time thinking we just don't have enough faith. And we wonder how we could increase it. We are curious about how that might change our lives. So... I think that while having a little faith is nothing to be ashamed about, quite honestly, and it's in fact all you need because it turns out it's like a weed, a mustard seed that farmers hate when it gets into their plowed fields and it grows all on its own without any nurturing. In fact, the more you don't pay attention to it, the better it grows. But for you... And asking this question, I want to be honest. (laughs) The problem isn't getting more faith. I'm not going to give you a solution to getting more faith, okay? Because that's not what you need. I don't think Jesus says, oh, you need more faith. What I think you need and what I need is to be reminded that we only need a little faith to move mountains. Only a little. And the only way you're going to remember you only need a little is if you come to church regularly. (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, see, that's the thing. It's like we want our relationship with God to change. We want things to be better. We, we say, oh, we want you to increase our faith, but not on Sunday morning. But what I want to tell you is you don't need all that other stuff. What you actually need is to be reminded that there is no shame, that you are worthy and beautiful, and that God wants you to belong. But the only way to be reminded of that is to come into a community that welcomes you no matter what. Regular worship actually helps to maintain the fact that you only need a little faith and that God has done all the work for you. It's not about coming and getting something you don't have. It's about coming to be reminded of what you already have in Jesus, you see. I think you should read the Bible. Oh, that's crazy, Bishop. (laughs) I actually think another way to be reminded about how you don't need more faith, but a little faith, that I actually think you should read the Bible and be reminded of all of God's acts that show that God loves you, that God cares for you, that God's created you as a beautiful person, that God wants you to belong to community, that God has given God's self for you on the cross and God's given you the comforter and the Holy Spirit. I mean, we say this all the time, but if you will read it, you know, I'm not even saying a whole chapter. Just open the book from time to time. (laughs) You know, you wait and hope that like the few minutes that you get on Sunday is going to carry you all week long. You know, and it just, it's the world of, you know, this is what these folks are are, are fighting with, right? The world is pressing in on them. Increase our faith. No, you need to be reminded that I'm here with you, Jesus says, to the end of the ages. And one of the ways we remind ourselves is to read the Bible. Now, the last thing, because you're expecting this, is you should talk to God. Now, I know that sounds strange. But prayer actually works. <laughs> Crazy bishop with all these newfangled ideas coming around here. But I think that if you pray during the week, and sometimes just sit and listen to what God might be speaking to you. You won't necessarily find answers to your questions, but you will find a peace beyond all understanding. And you'll find that the little faith that you have actually is enough to face whatever it is that's in front of you. Because God, you'll find in prayer, is present with you. God has done everything that is required 
God loves you. Before you arrived or even asked for it, it was all taken care of for you. To us in the parable today, God's grace and mercy, particularly God's shepherding, God's sowing and setting a table in the wilderness for us provides enough. In fact, it provides all that is needed. So a little faith. That's all it is. So much. So much. Tiny mustard seed and no more. For you'll discover that mountains move not so much when one believes, but because you've discovered God already moved them. You'll discover stumbling blocks will wash away in God's grace. You'll find that your own brokenness might have some measure of healing because of God's balm. To life with God, there is no barrier except for those that we put up in its place. It's not that God does not love us or care for us, but more that we need a bit of reminding on a regular basis. So don't be ashamed how much faith you have. In fact, I would argue you have the faith that you need. But in order for that mustard seed to grow and to work, you do have to do a few things so that you remember all has been provided for you by our good shepherd and Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.